Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tony D'Angelo's PM Coast to Coast. Now, here's your host, Tony D'Angelo. And a very good afternoon to you, all of our friends and fans on the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. I am your host, Tony D'Angelo, and this is Tony D'Angelo's PM Coast to Coast. Today, our subject is school safety. I have a lot of, shall I say, interest in this subject. I do not think it is being dealt with sufficiently on either a local or national level. Uh, I put my state right up there as to things we can do better. And my guest today, David Barnes, the president and CEO of Isotec Inc. David is a member of the Committee for School Safety of the National Sheriff's Association. We're going to be talking to David about matters of school safety and security. It is just so important that children be able to live and work in a safe environment. I can't tell you how much that means to me because that's how I learned. So sit back and we're going to all learn something. We'll have David on right after our retro commercials here on Tony D'Angelo's PM Coast to Coast. We'll be right back right after this. Thunderstreak, Thunderstreak, the new super speed hydrofoil with five position hydrofins you set for action. Rev up high powered prop. Position rudder, check your course. Thunderstreak speeds across water. For submarine action, it crash dives underwater. Thunderstreak propels itself on maneuvers. You can make it turn, make it roll. Or bank. Then, Thunderstreak rises, surfaces, and speeds away. Take Thunderstreak on snow patrol. It even skates over ice. Thunderstreak goes anywhere, so snap on land cruiser wheels and race with Thunderstreak on land, on ice, underwater, overwater. Thunderstreak, there's nothing in the world like Thunderstreak, made only by ideal. Alerting the stations up and down the line, David Barnes, right after this. I am joined by David Barnes, the president and CEO of Isotec Security. Today we'll be talking uh, about matters concerning school security and other things related. And David, it's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you for being here today. Oh, thanks for having me. And I, you know, I'm curious, we're speaking for the first time. What led you to the work that you now do and uh, the interest that you now have in keeping our kids safe? Well, without the, going through the full litany of, of my history, um, suffice it to say, I, I was educated uh, with a criminal justice background, uh, worked with San Diego PD, um, California State Attorney General's Office, so forth. And, uh, over time, just you know, migrated, um, you know, with my experiences and with different companies that I was engaged in, uh, came across Isotech Inc., which is a, a company uh, that I purchased uh, and became Isotech Security back in 2008. And our goal and our mission objective is to keep safe. Uh, 
the innocent, the unknowing, and those charged with their protection. So we're, we're a life safety company. And uh, I got involved, again, because I understand that safety and security uh, is a 24-7 um, detail. And you have to be spot on 100% of the time because the threats that you're guarding against really only have to be right once or, or be lucky once. And that's something that you know we just can't afford. So it's, it's good to be on the side of, of protecting people. Um, on our website, you, you, you'll hear that you know, we protect uh, the people that protect the president. And that's an honor to protect uh, our men in uniform, all those people that serve the public interest. Um, and that uh, concern has led us uh, directly to uh, being part of a committee uh, with the National Sheriff's Association for school safety. Because there is nothing, I think, to any of us uh, more, more horrible than losing the life of a child um, when it can be prevented and knowing that the solutions that we have to a problem like, like school safety um, and security, um, the solutions are all around us, and we just have to utilize our resources. I, y- y- you know, and what you've said is just so touching to me. I mean, I don't even really know where to begin. It's like whenever we see something happen... It's almost like we're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Now, I suppose we could go on in the the litanies of society and the problems and, you know, uh, guns and ammunition laying around and people picking them up and doing something horrible. What are some of the major things that as a, a country, a nation, a community, we could be doing better so that I'm not saying we're ever going to get rid of it, but certainly to minimize it or to, to help reduce it. I think starting with, with education and raising the conscious level of, of all parties that are involved. Um, I'll take you back 20 years ago. Um, you're walking to an airport. You see a bag sitting there left unattended. You just walk by that bag. Today, you walk by an airport a bag unattended because of the, the conscious level of our society you draw that to, a, to someone's attention right and you hear it um, over the intercoms right you know please don't leave your bags unattended and basically what that does is that it empowers the public to be on the lookout and in, in something like related to school security Empowering people before they become victims, I think, as a start, would, would be very beneficial. Uh, school safety, school security has got to be approached on a holistic approach. And it has to start with education. As an example, um, seatbelts. I've seen commercials for seatbelts. I've seen commercials for car safety. I haven't seen commercials for school safety. I haven't either. Uh, uh, those are the types of things that, if we can communicate, it starts with rhetoric, um, and then it follows through, and then people feel, I honestly believe, people will feel empowered to step up, to participate. And then you have, I'll call it the internet of ideas, that will start to flow, and people become conscious of helping to solve this kind of problem. Now, do you feel in your career, in your observations, in your in your life, in your professional life that um, we're somehow? I mean, we. I, I mean, it's almost a redundant thing to say of how tax money is diverted for things where it could be diverted for better things, but how? If you can give me some examples of funding that could go for school safety that might be going for other places and other things that you know may not be as critical. I, I, I really can't address that. Um, I, 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 I
address um, you know what is critical, what's not, because mm-hmm. we'll we'll have different points of view. Sure. However, we we as a country are a country of abundance, um, and it's a statistic. Uh, the United States federal government spends fifty-seven million dollars an hour on defense. We spend eleven million dollars an hour on education. Um, Defense is important. However, to me, that seems unsustainable because a society that is falling behind on education is falling behind on all fronts eventually. Another interesting statistic, and, and by the way, we, we're a federal contractor. We do, a lot of bu- we do a lot of business with the Department of Defense, Department of Energy, and so on. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate you know their efforts. However, you also step back and look at the amount of money, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, this is just an analysis, nothing other than that. Uh, the United States is the top financier of NATO. We spend $685 million a year on NATO, which is three times greater than the top 10 European countries you know, who operate in that neck of the woods. That's not, that's not even our neck of the woods, but we're spending money there should there not be an allocation or a thought process of what can we be doing at home um, and doing this time, if you look at it uh, over time, the United States continues to decline against other countries as far as uh, educational uh, proficiency in math, science, engineering, and so forth. And I often wonder, is there this correlation of getting, I'm not going to call it a substandard education compared to global standards, but a diminishing educational capability and the rise in school violence? Um, you know, is there that correlation? Are we looking at that? Um, but what we do know is that the United States has the ability to fund for school safety and school education if we have that willpower to do so. You know, it's an interesting thing, and you you made me think of something, and I've said this on more than one occasion, and when I've said it, uh, every person that I've said it to has looked at me like I've had six heads, but uh, after a while they say, you know, you, you may have something there. Education diminishing school safety becoming an issue and you know i i tend to look at things like chicken and egg and i can give you an an incident of 45 years ago i was on my way to a summer league ball game uh with um one of the other players who was driving i think it was a little ford or mercury car and he was an education major at saint john's university his dad was a professor and he was very passionate about children's education. And during this, well, I think we were riding from, I don't know, maybe New Rochelle, New York, to uh, uh, it might have been like uh, Cortland, New York or something. He began to say, mark my words, Tony. You will, and, and this is just because what you said, David, just struck a chord. He said, you will see the diminishment in education starting from the beginning of Sesame Street. And I looked at him. I said, Doug, what do you mean? He said, because what we're now starting to do, rather than getting kids to find answers on their own, we're leading them to the answer. And in that, they're not learning their thinking processes. And, you know, I say this, and honestly, truthfully, David, when I go back, I think it started back then, and then it kind of goes forward. Every teacher is going to hate me. It, 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 it goes forward to this time of uh, what you say is a diminishment of education and an increase in violence. My opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there's something to be said for the fact that Exactly. Right? Um, and that's, that, that could have something to do with it. 
Exactly. And I know um, when I do a show like this, I um, my uh, local legislature in Connecticut, um, I, I have a uh, – well, it's a publicly available means, but I send these broadcasts to our legislators saying this is something you need to be aware of. So you're going to be addressing a number of legislators here on the East Coast because we do something here, they listen, and they may not want to tell me that they're listening, but they're listening. What would be your admonition or counsel or directions to a state legislature, a state like Connecticut, who really right now is, uh, you know, maybe not much different than Illinois with financial problems as to what types of things they could do to make the school environment safer. I, I would begin with, first of all, making a commitment to address that it is an issue. Um, first and foremost. It is an issue. Uh, secondly, I would look at, uh, I want to say, uh, uh, being in cooperation with all potential resources, because what we know about safety and security, first and foremost, it's a concept. They're both concepts. Um, I don't think people are looking for mandates. This is the way you're going to do it. But I think what's important is that the state each legislature promotes because they are represented by different counties, different jurisdictions, um, but they can work with all their communities on what will work for them and give them the support for that effort. For me, David Barnes, it has to start with a communication. It, it has to start with a regimen that uh, for instance, uh, like the National Sheriff's Association, they, they are trying to put together um, an information source where people can come to gather information that is you know, not political, it's basically just dedicated toward school safety, right? And, there are, and they'll be the first to tell you that there is no one solution. It has to be a holistic solution. But knowing that from a, from a governmental uh, perspective, this is important, when states start making that commitment, um, like they're doing, and, I, and I'm not calling anybody out, but like they're doing in Indiana, they, they're really recognizing the importance and actually passing, um, I don't want to call it legislation, but they're, they're passing... Um, discussions and putting forth ideas to help enhance school safety. And it's got to start somewhere. And that's what leaders do. They lead. It might not be popular. Um, however, what we're starting to see is that that's what's happening. And if I'm talking to a legislator, I want to know what, what you can do to help your state, your community, protect the life of that child, which, by the way, is far and away this country's most valuable asset. For sure. You lose that, when you lose that child, what did you lose? You lost 60, 70 years of, of, of Lord only knows what you, you, know, you lost out there. Did you, you know, what invention did they have in their head? What cure? Were they, you know, possibly capable of, right? And the the reverberation of that act of violence. What did it do to your community? And to our legislators, guys, you know, legislators, you have the opportunity um, to step forth and be the proponents of school safety, starting with we'll call it town meetings, starting with the articulation. Uh, thought processes to enhance uh, student awareness. I mean, if, again, looking at seatbelts, looking at better nutrition, it all starts with an idea. And then the, I'll call it the promotion of that idea through very well orchestrated um, broadcast, if you would, 
um, you know, town meetings and so forth. It can happen, but I, I, I just don't see it happening like I've seen it happen, and, and it's well documented, like in the state of Indiana. You know, they're putting resolutions. We should be doing this. And, you know, that's just those. The man, David Barnes, he is the president and CEO of Isotech Security. David, I, I thank you so much for being well, with me today and uh, with our friends and fans. Where could people reach you and follow you and benefit from your years of experience and your incredibly good counsel in this area? Uh, well, you can visit our website. Uh, Isotech Security, just type it in, you'll, uh, to your URL, you'll be able to pull us up, um, or www.isotechinc.com, uh, that's our website, uh, but again, just typing in Isotech Security, you'll be able to pull us up. Great, and uh, thank you so much for that, and do keep us posted as to your endeavors and what may be happening and developments, because as we know... Uh, and uh, as I've shared uh, many times with our mutual friend Mark Barkley, this is a continuing conversation. Thank you so much for being with us today, David. Thanks. It was a pleasure. Best you too. Thank you. Who ever heard of an airline that goes around the world twice a day, every day? Who ever heard of an airline with 87 first class entrees? Who ever heard of an airline with stewardesses from over 50 different countries? for the moon. The airline is the world's most experienced airline. The airline that's going places like you've never gone before. Special thanks to our guest, David Barnes, the president and CEO of Isotech Security, and for the time he has spent with us regarding the safety of those who are innocent and in need in our school children. One of the missions of the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network is to deliver your slightly used children's books to head start kids need to read also don't text and drive and never ever 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 give it up folks ask for help call the suicide hotline or leave word with any one of us here at the station it's not that bad i'm living proof of that so from tony d'angelo and all of the jocks and hosts on the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network, we bid you a great day, make it a great week, and we will see you next week with a surprise guest. Take care and God bless. Bye, everybody.